Well, let's start off with, uh, if you saw my last video where I removed the carob tree, I wanted you to know that I put the word out to a bunch of bowl turners, and one of them has already sent me back pictures of what he did with that wood, so it didn't go to waste. You know, I'm titling this video, The Best Hands Off for Pruning, and I thought about it, and it's, it's really probably the wrong title. I should have titled it my favorite handsaw for the type of pruning that I like to do. Because there's different handsaws for different procedures and different things that you need to do in the tree. You've got this big long handsaw if you're making great big cuts. You've got a curved handsaw if you're making very aggressive cuts. And then my favorite handsaw is a straight blade with a real fine Japanese tri-tooth blade that is easy to manage and not quite as aggressive. You see, if you have a really aggressive handsaw, it tears and it rips and oftentimes it pulls or it grabs because the curve, it doesn't slide across the cut. It digs in. Now, if you're going aggressive, you know, just wailing on the cuts, but a lot of the pruning that I do is really fine pruning. You know, I'm working on fruit trees, I'm working on Japanese maples, I'm working on people's fine, beautiful plants in their yards where I have to make very precise, very clean, very exact cuts. So the handsaw that I prefer, well the blade, let's talk about the blade first. The blade that I like is called the ARS and they have a straight blade, it's the 25. They've also got one called the 30. They both got the same size in the teeth. One's a little bit longer, but I like the shorter blade. And I need to tell you why. Because a curved blade, if you're trying to get into a real tight spot, real close, and you give a pull, it digs in real quick, and you've got to, you don't have the smoothness of the cut. You don't have that, that slide. So. And many of my cuts, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just barely putting it on there and it's a soft, easy cut at first. And then I give it a little bit more pressure and then I can cut it off fast. The handsaw that I use also has got to feel good in my hand. So my favorite handsaw is really one that I make myself. You know, the, the handle is, is it's got to fit my hand. So I'm going to show you one that I've refined and I've changed and I've altered it a bit. And I've done this many times over the years. They usually end up losing them or breaking them and having to redo them. But I did a new one today and I think you'll understand. Come check it out. Okay, so this video does start out in my wood shop. And uh, I make a lot of my own handles. And a uh, handsaw handle has got to not only fit your hand, it's got to be very comfortable without any real sharp edges. And as you can see in the background there, that's the stock handsaw handle. And it's not bad, but it's, it's got kind of a sharp point on the very end. And some of the edges are just a little bit too abrupt. But most importantly, it's just a little bit too small for my hand. It's a little bit too narrow. You can see the difference. So I, I actually built this out of a, a piece of black oak. Came from that, uh, that you know, actually it was that tree that almost hit me. Um, here's the blades that I prefer. I like both the 25 and the 30, but a lot of times I like to get into real tight, small areas. And, and much of my, my work, um, I, I use the handsaw and the hand pruners almost exclusively it's like the the primary tool there's my little maker's mark on my tools quite often i make that little mark so here's the old hand saw you can see it's just it's just not quite the same you know it needs to be a little bit bigger it needs needs to be a little bit softer and i like to to tune them up so that they're they're really smooth the other hand saw i use quite a bit is um, the curved blade now there's the one i'm working on but the curved blade, this is actually the, the primary saw that, that most tree workers like to use. Uh, this particular one is a Fano, which is a good saw. But 
the difference between the curved blade and the straight blade is, is rather significant. There's my old uh, scabbard there. I like the scabbard that holds my hand saw and my hand pruners. So I'm testing the new saw out. It's a brand new blade, and this is a old piece of dead uh, rhododendron, which is very, very hard. Uh, it's cutting pretty smooth. Really hard dead wood is hard to cut with a hand saw, no matter what hand saw you use. But I'm going to get into uh, a pruning job after this that I didn't even start the chainsaw up once. So let's, let's start off with the tree. There was a number of trees on this property, but this is a liquid amber tree that I was able to get the bucket in close enough to. Uh, Jorge had a pistache. Everything's dormant right now, so you can easily see the structure of the trees that we're working on. And let's see, there was a few crepe myrtles on the property. There was a whole bunch of little things. One of the things we do is that we call a daily rate where we go into the yard and we'll start at one side and we'll work all the way around. And it gives us the opportunity to uh, make adjustments everywhere. This is a multi-trunk crepe myrtle. And I'm not a fan of this type of a, a planting because everything grows so crowded and a lot of the... Uh, the trunks actually start abrading on each other. They start wearing into each other and that causes either um, long, mostly often it causes long-term uh, wounds to develop because they're rubbing on each other. But down low, as these develop, ultimately they, they start pushing each other apart. The woman said that she chose this particular uh, cultivar because it supposedly had blossoms that lasted the longest. I, I don't even know what cultivar it is. So here's another small landscaped area. You can see there's two citrus trees that she just planted. and They're going to evolve into something nice. So I, I wanted to tell you that uh, we didn't even start a chainsaw up on this job. Everything we did was hand saws, hand pruners, or in this case the pull saw. But uh, it was kind of nice, you know, we, it was a, a nice quiet day. So let's get back to the liquid amber. I need to explain this and part of what I like to talk about is, is what I call tree decisions. Because most tree guys don't really understand what they're doing or why they're doing it. And this tree was topped severely years ago you can see what happened. There's a before and after cut for that particular area right there. You can see the the old wounds and the hollows and the voids. So I'm up in the bucket now looking down and you can see what the results were from a past topping. So this tree is developing big pockets of, of decay and big wounds and hollows and, and, and in many cases the areas where the trees were topped off are now developing so many multiples that the tree is starting to break up. So this is still a relatively young tree. So the, the damage that was caused by, I think it was the gardener did this, I'm not sure, it is rather extensive. And those branches up, up high are also causing multiples. So you kind of have to keep the weight down, but at some point you've got to make some more complicated decisions about what you're going to end up doing. And I wanted you to pay close attention to these branches that are going straight down. Those are a direct cause, a direct result from a past pruning cut, albeit a small cut, but they either nicked another part of the tree or they were done in such a way that caused uh, the branches. Here, that's a great shot right there. I took a still and you can see that the branch broke because of the pruning cuts. This one right here, there was two pruning wounds. There was one where the branch broke and you can see there was a stub that was left. I mean, that's, that's only about a three-quarter inch diameter branch but 
even the tiny little cuts you can see how much growth resulted from where that cut was and that caused it to break and if you add that up uh, you have so much of the trees starting to self-destruct that branches are breaking everywhere and you also have to remember that whatever type of tree you're working on is going to have its own unique issues in this case the liquid amber develops the the big heavy seed pods throughout and those seed pods can cause branches to break look at this there's a couple of there's a pruning wound and you can see that the the wound on the other side is a nick so it was probably done with a uh, pole saw or something or a hand saw and they nicked the backside and it continued to grow and then it broke there's lots and lots of wounds in this tree. Okay, this is a before and after shot. Okay, this is the thinning and the opening up that I did in this particular area. There's before and after. So here's what the tree looks like after I spent some time on it. I did all this work here. And bear in mind, this is all with a handsaw. I didn't start the chainsaw up once. So I did a lot of, of pruning work up in this tree. And then getting back over to the uh, uh, the crepe myrtle, there was one big one that I decided to get rid of. So I had to make a couple of fairly large cuts. You can't just cut it at the base and, and pull it out because it's just it, it's so tangled up in here that you've got to make lots of little cuts to get it down to where you can make a, a final uh, base cut. So I don't think I showed the whole thing here. But you can see my saw is working fairly well. I like the the round hook end that makes quite a difference up in the air looking down on my tree I like getting high up in the bucket sometimes and just perusing the neighborhood I like looking at other trees off in the distance that's kind of interesting this was a neighbor's property and they had three redwood trees and you can see the redwood on the right you have to look close, but the trunk was cut off or broke off in a storm. And you can see there's one, two, three. Those are all in the same backyard. I thought that possibly one of them was in a, a neighbor's backyard and the other two were in another one, but now they were on, all in the same yard. So I'm almost done with this tree. I've still got the backside to do, but you can see I've made all my pruning wounds, pruning cuts, on this side of the tree I've done some thinning I've done some opening up there was a lot of dead up there a lot of broken branches and and just so much congestion unfortunately when a tree gets topped quite often that sets the future of this tree's needs and finally Jorge's in the backyard <laughs> You know you're going to have to go swimming to get all this stuff. <laughs>